friends, welcome back to my channel. I hope that you're doing well. Welcome to another video and welcome back to day nine of 12 Days of Bookmas. Today I'm going to be doing a video that has been floating around book two for several years. I just haven't had the confidence or uh, what I feel like skill skill set to share these recommendations with you. But I feel like I have read a couple of books that I can compare to each other so I can give this video to you. Um, and I just, as I skirt around the idea, basically what I'm trying to tell you is I'm doing the, if you like this, then you should read this type of video. Um, I have, I don't know, like seven or eight pairings here of books that I think that if you liked one, then you would like the other um, and vice versa, depending on how you have read them. Um, I'm hoping that these recommendations are sound. Some of these are ones that I've definitely see, seen compared by other people. Others I have read myself and like thought like, oh damn, I've never heard anybody compare this, but I think that it works perfectly. So without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about the several books that I paired up. And if you like this, you should hopefully like this. <laughs> the first one that we're gonna talk about is the one that we're gonna talk about first only because it was on top of my stack, but I feel like it's also one of the most um, well-known ones that I have seen, but that's if you like Red, White, and Royal Blue, you will probably like The Boyfriend Material by Alexis Hall. They are both very similar in regards to their um, premises. Both of them deal with fake dating, uh, both of them deal with male-male romances, and both of them are set in um, England? The UK? Ooh, don't quote me on that because I cannot remember off the top of my head. But um, yes, both of them are set outside of the United States of America <laughs> in, a, in a place where they have accents. <laughs> <laughs> this is not helping. Um, I think that the, the humor in both of these books are also very similar. I feel like um, they both have the same amount of like spiciness level to them as well. So if you like that in these books, then I think that you will enjoy one or the other, depending on which one you have read. Um, this one is a little bit more adult, I feel like, um, in regards to what's being talked about and the premise behind the stories, but I think that they're very similar. This one also talks about um, royalty and the presidency, whereas this one does not deal with that. But again, they have the same vibes and I, I feel like if you like one, then you'll like the other. Up next, we're gonna talk about some smut. I feel like I don't talk about enough smutty books on my channel. <laughs> <laughs> so I need to subject you to more. And this particular series, I don't talk about it at all. Like, never. Um, and that is the Madison Kate series by Tate James. I feel like if you like this one, then you'll like the Ruthless Game series. I honestly, off the top of my head, cannot remember who wrote this book because I don't have them physically. But um, these ones have very, very similar premises. They are both reverse harem books um, dealing with three men and one female. Um, but they also have the same type of, like, mafia vibes, badass men, uh, touch her and I'll kill you type vibes to the books and I feel like they had some the similar writing styles um, and the heroines were both very badass female characters that just didn't give two shits about what other people thought of them and were willing to do whatever it takes to take care of their men in these stories and I felt like they were very similar in those aspects. They both deal with very different things in regards to the um like style of dark romances that they are, but because they're both reverse harems, because the men I feel like are very similar to each other and the females of these stories are very similar to each other, I feel like if you like this one, then you'll definitely like this one. Another one that I have definitely seen floating around in regards to comparisons, and that is If You Liked Nevermore by Jessica Townsend, then you should read Amari and the Night Brothers by B.B. Alston. These are very, very cute middle grades that I think that everybody should read and give a try at some point. I think that these are two middle grades that will appeal to a larger audience that aren't just um, middle grade children. I love both of these books so much and they both kind of deal with a very similar type of character. You have this outcast character who kind of comes into a magical setting with absolutely no idea about how the world or the magic works and they're forced to join a competition in which they have to prove themselves in order to get what they are ultimately coming to this situation for. Um, in Amari and the Night Brothers, um, I cannot remember her name, Amari. <laughs> Amari um, is desperate to figure out what happened to her brothers until her brothers appeared. And um, Morgan Crope and Wondersmith is just really trying to find a place to become alive and live a life where she doesn't feel like she has to uh, step, like, step on eggshells around everybody and apologize for everything. And so I think they're really, really similar middle grade stories with a very interesting magic system, but they also, also deal with big bad like magicians that you're also like trying to fight in the background. I think they're both very, very similar and I really think that if you like one, that you like the other. Okay, the next one that I'm going to recommend is a YA contemporary romance duo. And I feel like these two go together really well. One of them is talked about quite a bit and the other one I haven't heard anybody really talk about. And the first one being To All the Boys I Loved Before. And I feel like if you liked this one, then 
and you should read The Upside of Falling by Alexis Light. I believe that one was originally a Wattpad book, but it was just a really quick, easy read that I found super light, jovial, and just nice when I'm looking for a good buffer between some of my darker, heavier reads. And I feel like the similarities between the two of these is um, they are both fake dating stories with a um, like very like shy, less popular girl and a jock or athlete um, male. And they come together and obviously a fake dating relationship turns into more. But um, I think that both of them also deal with heavier topics. In The Upside of uh, Falling, you deal with cheating. And then in um, To All the Boys I Love Before, you have a grieving teenage girl at the, after the loss of her mother. So I feel like there's a lot of aspects in these books that kind of feel very similar and fit the same vibes but they're also both very joyful happy books that are just so much fun to read so I definitely feel like if you like one you should read the other. Okay let's make some recommendations to my queen. Obviously you guys know that I love and adore Sarah J Mass, and I feel like I have some books here that are very very popular. Some of them aren't so much but some of them that are very popular that I think um, have some good vibes to them. The first one that I'm going to recommend is j just purely based off of the retelling aspect and that is of course A Court of Thorns and Roses and A Crystal Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kemmerer. I feel like if you liked one or the other of these books then you will probably like the one that you have not read. I feel like um, in regards to Beauty and the Beast retellings I think they are both done quite well and I really enjoyed the storytelling aspects of both of these. They both deal with um, the world very differently but you also have this kind of um, aspect of these women who end up in like almost like a portal world because they're both coming from the human world into a fairy world um, where they are forced to deal with magic that they had no idea about. Um, and I feel like those are very similar in those aspects. Obviously one has a little bit more uh, adult content when it comes to the series and the other one doesn't but I feel like if you liked the um, interesting aspects of the magic system and learning a new world and coming in into your own with different characters that don't necessarily um match the main female character but you also learn to love them nonetheless i feel like you'll definitely love one or the other um i definitely can say that this one is my favorite series between the two but i think they're both really really good okay the next two are going to be a duo of recommendations to one other series that i think goes well with sarah j mass's writing and vibe so i feel like if you liked akatar or crescent city then i think that you'll really enjoy the rhapsodic series or the bergener series by laura thalassa i think that they are very similar i think that this recommendation might do better with crescent city rather than a court of and roses because they both deal with a urban fantasy type setting with lots of different creatures and um type as uh, supernatural type of beings which i feel like also works for a quarter thrones and roses depending on how you take those um recommendations but you also have really awesome female characters in all three of these books which i feel like is a standout portion of this aspect i also feel like the transformations that these characters go through are very very similar to each other so i feel like especially with the quarter thrones and roses if you liked that transformation aspect between the um first and second book in the series and i think that you'll really enjoy the rhapsodic series this one is definitely smutty right off the bat whereas the a quarter thrones and roses series and the crescent city series are kind of like they get smutty as you go on. This is definitely a dark smutty romance, so depending on what you like, um, but this is definitely one that I don't hear a ton of people talking about, so if you liked this series, I think that you'll love this one. I promise this is going to be the last and final Sarah J Mass recommendation, but I feel like if you liked Crescent City, then you will love A Dark and Hollow Star by Ashley Shuttleworth. I think that these two uh, novels are very, very similar in a lot of different ways. First of all, they are both first books in a series, which um, I feel like works very well for this comparison because you're kind of getting to see hints and um a little bit of understanding of each character but you don't have a full scope of what you're looking at just yet um but i also love that they're both set in this very large urban city backdrop uh, obviously you're dealing with crescent city in this one which is kind of like a very urbanized even more modernized new york and then this one is set in toronto canada no it literally has a space needle it's set in <laughs> seattle washington <laughs> oh my god um so you have like these really, really big cities with these really interesting, um, you know, like supernatural, paranormal uh, beings walking around and doing their thing. I feel like in this one, it definitely has more of a emphasis on magical, cre mag magical creatures running amok throughout the city. This one has a little bit more of a secret, hidden, uh, paranormal world, but you also are dealing with 
split perspectives which you deal with in both books as well as really badass characters in regards to all the characters that are encompassed in both of these books um and i also feel like the writing style between these two authors are very very similar so again i feel like if you like sarah jamas's writing and the way that she wrote her characters into crescent city's world then i think that you'll really like the writing style and the characters of a dark and hollow star and we're going to be doing our very, very last recommendation today. And I feel like this is not a book series that I hear talked about a ton. One of them, yes, definitely. But the other one, I definitely don't hear enough people talking about it. And I think that it's a fantastic first book in a series. And what I'm going to recommend is if you like A Darker Shade of Magic by the e. Schwab, then you will like Nocturna by Maya Motain. I feel like these are both very 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 similar in regards to their their premises as well as their characters as well as their magic systems so um this one is adult where this one is ya but these both deal with two characters a male and a female that come from very different parts of their world but um you're dealing with a thief in both of these books as the female character and then a prince if you want to call a prince um a prince in both of these stories as the male character and somehow um a dark strain of magic from both worlds ends up running amok between the two characters um, and they are forced to work together in order to stop whatever is happening um, and causing danger to their worlds. I also feel like both of the characters, both male and female in both of these books, feel very similar in regards to the way that they um, react to things. I feel like especially um, Delilah Bard and Finn are very similar because they're both thieves and they are kind of um, the lowest of the low in regards to their um social status and so they kind of have to fight for whatever they want whereas Kel and Alfie are kind of handed things on a daily basis and so they don't quite understand the ramifications and the consequences of their actions and so they're forced to learn that throughout the books and I feel like they are very very similar stories but also have so much different from them that you'll enjoy them both on their own so I definitely think that if you have read this series and you're looking for something new and different but also similar and will give you the same vibe I think that you'll really enjoy this book. I honestly don't know if any of that made sense. I am a little bit loopy today, so bear with me. I hope that you found some recommendations in here that you will take for your own. And hopefully if you liked one of those books, that you will really enjoy the other. If you don't, don't come for me. I apologize. These are just my opinions. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but I hope that you enjoyed it nonetheless. If you made it to the end of this video, leave a peace sign emoji for the number two. Or leave a two whatever you want <laughs> just because we're talking about pairs here and I feel like that's very very uh apt but um yeah I really hope that you enjoyed this I hope that you guys are enjoying enjoying 12 days of bookmas I think I said that in every video but I really do hope that you guys are enjoying coming along this journey with me it's been so fun but also kind of crazy I'm not gonna lie but anyways that is the end of this video I really hope that you enjoyed it if you did please make sure to give it a big old thumbs up don't forget to subscribe before you leave and of course leave any comments questions and suggestions in the comment section below and I will see you in the next video bye